The heart rate monitors uh, are just what I would call tools in, in my toolbox. Uh, I've been doing this for 17 years now, 12th year with women's basketball. From that standpoint, the human eye is always going to be your best piece of technology. And you can never you know, forget that the human eye sees things that technology can't. Technology is only going to see what you want it to see or what it's programmed to see. What the technology has done for me and for Heidi and our staff comprehensively has allowed us to take the subjectivity out of it. Um, it gives us an objective measure in the case of the heart rate monitoring. It gives us an objective measure of where they are. Are they working into lactate threshold, where, which is where the, the game is played? How quickly are they getting out of lactate threshold? Are they really working as hard as they need to be working in this particular, on this particular series of, of drills or events? And then moving forward, it, it also allows us, more importantly, to track trends. And seeing the data that lays out after they do all of these workouts, you can really see um, injury trends. When are injuries happening? Are they happening um, in the first part of practice, in the, in the last part of practice? You know, is a player pushing off more on the left than the right? Um, so really, injury trends is the biggest thing I use, um, but there's a lot of things you can use for seeing mileage in practice, seeing um, heart rate output, you know, how hard are the athletes working? Are they overworking? Are they underachieving? That's just some information you can get from it. The Omega Wave training um, is something we do with a select group of athletes. Um, what the Omega Wave does is test you neurologically. Um, it tells us whether a kid's parasympathetic or sympathetic in their nervous system on that given day. It lets us know what their heart rate variability is on a given day. Um, and it'll also tell us their overall picture of where their athletic readiness is. And then this shows um, everything on how they're recovering mentally, how they're recovering physically. So I think it adds in that extra piece. Uh, that we don't always see on the physical standpoint. We're always talking about um, actual physical fatigue, but this is adding in the mental piece, which as a college student athlete, you know, they have finals, they have tests, they have classes. There's the sleep component, and I think that brings in a whole new edge to what, what other teams don't have um, that we have because that does play a big role. In my experience working with championship, national championship teams and Olympians, those, those factors are really the ones that make or break you because when everything's laid out on the line, a lot of times skill is going to be equal. Talent at this level, Big 12, Division I level, talent's going to most times be equal. It's what you're doing outside of the realm of the game that's really going to take you over the hump. That's, that's what really separates you from someone else. Um, are the little things you're doing. What are you doing when you're away from your team? What are you doing when you're away from your coaches? How are you taking care of your body? How are you better preparing your body for the next day and moving forward into the next day of preparation, the next game, so on and so forth? The, the hydration, the rest, the, the, rest uh, the recovery methods, all those things are critical to the success and longevity of your career and, and really success of the season.